All right, so now we're going to talk about IPM for wildlife damage. So for integrated wildlife damage, we need to assess all considerations and options for managing these animals. We need to know what species is causing the damage, what type of crops are being affected, how many acres are involved in the problem, whether the orchard is nested in a housing development, densely populated area surrounding the apple orchard, and we need to think about an appropriate combination of techniques for management that are going to bring about the desired result. And then once we've done that, we need to reassess and figure out, did things work? Hmm. And if they didn't work, why didn't they work? And what might the other options be to control that species? So here's just a nutshell view of management options in the context of IPM. So there's population management and also habitat management. We can use exclusion methods like an eight foot woven wire fence, or we can use chemicals like repellents applied on trees that would repel deer from browsing on those trees. Hunting is cheap and can provide quick results as well and is a good way of managing populations of deer, for instance. So what are the factors that influence deer feeding pressure? Certainly their population density. If you have this many deer in the winter time near your orchard, it is very likely that you're going to have browse injury occurring in your orchard unless you have fencing up. Does the deer herd have food and cover sources near the apple orchard? And if so, could you eliminate some of those? Did you plant your orchard right next to or over a historic travel corridor for this herd of deer? That's not a good idea. Do they have an alternative food supply? around the orchard that you might be able to encourage them to feed on instead of your apples? If they don't, it probably doesn't matter how much repellent you put on that orchard, they're still going to need to browse on your trees because they don't have alternative foods. Consider the season and the weather. Years with snow cover that starts in December and goes all the way through March provide significant pressure for the deer to find food resources above the ground, like your apple trees. And are the trees palatable? Mm, do they taste sweet like Honeycrisp might? I don't really know, but think about that. And if the deer has previously been feeding on the apples, they probably will continue feeding on the apples. The landowner has control of deer hunting or hunting for any nuisance wildlife on their property. Keep that in mind and tailor the hunting to meet your local needs. Make sure you understand that you can restrict who hunts, when they hunt, where they hunt, and how they hunt. You can have marksmanship requirements if you are asking a hunter to control nuisance wildlife, for instance, deer on your property. You need to make sure you check local town and village discharge ordinances for hunting and comply with those ordinances. Keep in mind that you'll have best results if you're managing the deer on a landscape scale, not just in one small area. It makes a difference if you decide what sex, age, and number of deer can be taken by the hunter. Use DEC, Deer Management Assistance Permits. 
These are permits that you can get to hire hunters in to your orchard to reduce a nuisance wildlife problem with deer. Or you can get a deer damage permit yourself for farms with high damage issues. Keep in mind that harvesting females and does should be encouraged because in this way, you have a better impact on managing the herd overall. And most apple growers do consider hunting to be somewhat effective, not 100%, but somewhat effective at managing deer. Really the most effective method for managing deer is with fencing. Fencing provides the best long-term solution. It is really important to exclude the deer with fencing before they have prior experience browsing in your orchard because they can push through that fencing if they truly want to get in there. Avoid travel corridors. There was an example of a farm in the Hudson Valley that put a deer fence in and one corner of that fence basically went over a travel corridor used by deer historically. Well, you would think the deer would have gone around that small corner, but they did not. They repeatedly pushed through to use that same corridor until the grower decided you can't beat them, join them, and changed the fencing so that they had their travel corridor. Keep in mind that an eight foot height is minimum. And you can use a diagonal design if you have the space. If you train the deer to an electrified fence with baiting, you will have better success. They will sense the electric shock by virtue of reaching and touching the fence to get the peanut butter bait. Invisible fencing and dogs has had positive economic return in research that was done in the 80s. But keep in mind that some food safety restrictions and gap certification may preclude the ability to have dogs within the orchard area. So they may need to be kept out of the orchard area. Turning now to pine and meadow voles in orchards. These animals, basically like moist, well-drained, loose soil, if they're going to be digging burrows into that soil. And that's what the pine vole does. The meadow vole, on the other hand, has surface runs and prefers dense matted cover on the orchard floor. They have very similar diets. And for those growing apple trees, the problem is that they like to eat bark and they will chew the bark off of your trees as you can see in this picture. They will chew under where the snow is most commonly. They basically will have a new litter about every three to four weeks and those litters can be two to five individuals and so the population of these voles can build up fairly quickly. And again, they're active year round, all through the winter, unlike other animals that may hibernate in the winter. So the key for vole management is to eliminate their habitat. They require that ground cover for tunneling and for nesting. Even the pine vole will use grassy litter to line their nests. So use this to your advantage and manage your orchard to eliminate the habitat that they need either to burrow in like the meadow vole or to nest in, which they both use. Some management alternatives that you can consider include mowing and keeping that bare ground under the tree row. You can exclude voles with tree guards and you can use some chemicals like herbicides to keep that bare ground under the tree or rodenticides 
to kill the voles outright. Trapping can also be used as a management alternative. In the context of an IPM program, ground cover management is really important for vole management. They go hand in hand. And vole guards really are essential in the young orchard. And certainly our high density orchards are in need of vole guards. The prudent use of rodenticides is sometimes needed. And trapping out of voles is possible in small areas, but definitely plan for reinvasion. Some specifics in terms of orchard ground cover and habitat management. So mowing the row middles, as you can see in the photograph on the left, to keep that ground cover close and not thick. And then using herbicides within the tree row to get that bare ground cover. And then having the full guard around the trunk is crucial, as you can see in the two photographs on the left. Bait stations can be placed in these T-tubes as shown in the center right photograph. And rodenticides should really only be applied post-harvest or in early spring. Covering these bait stations is very important to encourage voles to feed on the bait inside. Looking now to rabbits and woodchucks in orchards, cottontail rabbits cause very sharp gnawing marks on trees. And you can see in that picture on the left, the gnawing of the bark completely off of that shrub, reaching as high as that cottontail rabbit could stretch. And below is the picture to show you the difference between deer damage, which rips and shreds the edge of the shoot, versus rabbit damage, which gnaws the shoot in a sharp angle. Woodchuck burrows, many of you have probably seen these, can be almost invisible as you're walking through the orchard until you hit one with your foot and twist your ankle or fall down and hurt yourself or get a ladder or equipment stuck in that. So you really don't want those in your orchard. Managing rabbits and woodchucks includes exclusion with tree guards and fencing for rabbits, population management with hunting, or you can do live trapping, but you will need a DEC permit. DEC stands for Department of Environmental Conservation. You can also use chemical repellents against rabbits. And these are often based on the urine of predator species, like coyotes or cats, big cats. Woodchuck IPM also involves population management. You can shoot or trap woodchucks, or you can use gas cartridges, which are, it's a cartridge that you light and you push it down into their burrow and cover quickly the burrow. You need to know where the entrance and exit are because typically there's two openings to their burrows. And basically it smothers the animal inside that burrow. You can also use exclusion with an electrified wire fence set at a five to six inch height to complement your deer fencing. Habitat management for woodchucks can be done via removal of brush and rock cover that they will be able to use and mowing fields and ditch banks surrounding the orchards can also provide some habitat management. 